Good evening, everyone. My name is Tate Reynolds. I'm the CEO of MedEx. Um, these are my handsome teammates, PJ, Sanjay, and Ian. And today, we're going to present to you one of the most exciting innovations in finance and budgeting since Mint and Intuit came up with TurboTax and their budgeting and their current uh, budgeting software. So, to get into it, we're going to introduce you all to John. John, just like Tate, you met in the video, is a hardworking American with a family. John has a lot of medical expenses, right? He needs to keep track of these expenses to get reimbursed from his HSA, and if the IRS ever audits him, um, he has to prove that he uses HSA effectively for uh, qualified expenses. And this leads John to a big problem. He will end up with stacks and stacks of receipts eventually, maybe decades, if he's trying to build his savings and his net worth through his HSA account. HSAs are almost 100% paper-driven, right? You have to keep your receipts in a file, you have to submit paper reimbursement forms, and none of this is easy because your budgeting is either on paper, on a spreadsheet, or you know, just in your head, and you're hoping that the IRS won't audit you. So, we came up with MedEx. Our solution has three steps, to digitize, to store, and to save. Step one, digitize, means to digitize the process for reimbursements, tracking, and storing from top to bottom. This means uploading receipts to the cloud, tracking your reimbursements on your phone, and also being able to see what your account balances are, how you're stacking up against your contribution limits and your spending limits for the year. And saving comes with tax money. So when people use their HSA, it's tax free, right? So if they are able to track their expenses a little bit better, scan receipts to automatically see what, what they bought that is HSA eligible, and also build their net worth tax-free with their investments, this will save them potentially thousands of dollars year over year as they use their HSA. So we have three main competitors. Um, HSA Butler is an Android app currently that's uh, not integrated with any banks. Um, all they do is store receipts, allow you to kind of document things. It's basically a glorified spreadsheet, which is our second uh, competitor, if people can make budgeting spreadsheets in Excel, very tedious process. I don't know why anyone would do that, but that's kind of the state of the market right now. Um, and finally, we've got competitors like Lively, and there are a couple similar competitors like Lively out there, but basically Lively offers their own HSA bank or account, um, and then because you've signed up with their HSA, you get to use their app. Um, not great, maybe your, your company offers a different HSA than Lively, and you want to go with Fidelity, or Vanguard, or Schwab, something like that. There needs to be a, a, a one-for-all solution um, on the market out there. Yeah, so as such, we're trying to make a more modular solution that will fit within multiple banks. And our ideal customer traits are um, active HSA use, personal accounting, um, at first, at least, our channel partnership will be Fidelity, so Fidelity users, um, and ultimately willing to pay a small fee for automated reimbursements. So we're gonna be targeting the middle 38% of HSA owners. This is anyone with account balances from 500 to $10,000. This is represented by an average age range of approximately 25 to 45 years old. And ultimately, the total assets in this market are expected to increase with a CAGR of approximately 10% each year through 2030. So, um, ultimately, we have access to approximately $34 billion via withdrawals every year once we expand beyond Fidelity. Fidelity accounts for approximately $5 billion of these withdrawals, and after accounting for our initial 38% target market, we're looking at a total addressable market, or total serviceable market, of $2 billion. Now with our revenue-based um, subscription model, we're going to be charging a total of 3% to our clients, and that will be split 1.5% to Fidelity and 1.5% to the customer. So we can expect, assuming an approximately 70% adoption the first year from Fidelity users, around $40 million in revenue. All right, now that we have a good understanding of our market, 
and we've been introduced to John, who is a typical user, we can go in and look through the eyes of John and see how exactly a typical user would use our application. Uh, first of all, I don't know about you guys, but I really hate, and so does John, remembering a different username and password for every single service that I subscribe to. That is why we're integrating with Apple and Google for authentication. All you'll need is a valid Gmail or an iCloud, and just remember the associated passwords, and you'll be able to have an edX account um, within seconds. Additionally, for all of our financial transactions and sensitive data, we'll be uh, integrating with Plaid. Plaid is a fintech solution for handling financial transactions. Uh, all you'll need to do is search your bank and log in with your bank details, and you're in. You'll be able to manage any transactions or any financial data. Uh, and of course, once you're signed in, um, we want to start using the app. And this is really the, the core of the app, is the ability to upload receipts. Here we want to focus on simplicity and convenience. After you have any healthcare expense, all you'll ever need to do is pull out your phone, take a picture of a receipt, and using OCR technology, you'll be able to scan this receipt, get all of the infor, um, information that is needed for tax purposes, you'll confirm that, and the receipt is uploaded to the cloud, stored securely, and you'll never need to keep a physical copy of the receipt again. And then of course, John has been very diligent keeping pictures of all of his receipt on, uh, receipts on MedEx, and then dreaded tax season rolls around. So how will John be able to do his taxes with MedEx? The MedEx will present all of your HSA um, information really easy. You can track reimbursements, you can automate reimbursements. If you're someone who really likes to stretch their HSA balances and invest for a very long time, um, before you ever withdraw, we can, of course, um, have options for that and make um, reimbursements completely automated. And then uh, CS, um, we'll also have an extra little feature that will really help people who use um, services such as TurboTax, where we can export Medix data in CSV format to those other services. So you'll never have to retype any of your uh, medical expenses ever again. <clears throat> right. Uh, moving on to marketing strategy, so we have a few channels that we're planning to go through. Um, first of which obviously is just our fidelity channel. Working with them to create content um, and also just optimize for SEO both within our own website and theirs as well. So back to targeting, just to rehash, 25 to 45 year old age group, um, approximately 30 to $100,000 in an annual income with $500 to $10,000 in their HSA. And ideally, uh, full-time uh, employees with healthcare benefits as well, because that'll result in continual um, investment in the HSA. So the budget for this marketing is TBD, and ultimately will be determined by the average customer acquisition cost through each channel. Um, and some other KPIs that we're looking at will be customer lifetime value generated from each channel as well as monthly active users generated from each channel. Alright, I wanted to give a special thanks to Tate for first off introducing the problem at hand right here. I wanted to give a special thanks to PJ for going over the marketing strategy as well as just what our market size is looking at, what, what, what we are here to tackle with Medix. And a thanks to Ian for guiding us through that amazing demo of what Medix will look like. I wanted to briefly touch a little bit on some of the competitive advantages we have. Um, Tate hinted at this earlier when he was when he was talking. He talked about how Medex, with Medex, other platforms are out there, other competitors are out there, but some allow for no bank integration and some allow for, for tie-ins to banks, but then you can only use that specific HSA provider. With Medex, we allow we allow for any for any um, for any partnership with any HSA provider. At the start, we're partnering with Fidelity with a 3% service fee, as PJ talked about. And we're looking really, we, we're running, running the numbers we see right here that there will be a potential for a 39.13 million in revenue from, from the first year just through Fidelity. So think about this. If we're expanding to other HSA providers, think of how much growth we'll have with two partners, with three partners, with other integrations to HSA. The sky's the limit with that. We also have tax benefits right here. Um, we're able to just through investment opportunities, you'll have, you'll have tax benefits. And then complete automation. Medex, at the end of the day, is trying to save people like John, save people like us, save anyone in the world from having to go through the hassles of, of mindlessly counting numbers, mindlessly doing these, doing these actions. 
with, with Medex, we'll be able to do everything in a very automated, easy to use process. And I just wanted to thank y'all for taking the time to be with us. I wanted to go ahead and just introduce the team a little bit more. We have Tay right here, who is our CEO. Here are some of his interests. He's a big skier, big climber, and a great musician. You guys should come to his recital sometimes here, not a little bit. We have Ian right here. He's our C CTO. He's the main guy who's going to help bring this product to life. His, his hobbies include hiking, hunting, and just technology in general. Ian loves staying up to date technology. I'm myself, I'm Sanjay. I'm over more of the policy and the regulations aspect of MedEx, dealing with those types of, th that side of the equation. And so my interests are ten tennis as well as fashion and just software in general. Then we have PJ right here. He will be our chief operating officer. He's a big biker and skier, and he's a serial entre entrepreneur with a lot of other startups he's worked on in the past. We wanted to thank y'all for taking the time to be with us, and if you have any questions, um, now is the time to address them, and please come to us afterwards and exchange our business cards. Before we jump to questions, we got a couple of testimonials just from a bit of market research that we've been doing. Um, so my dad, Trey Reynolds, is very interested in this product. He is the type of guy who wants to grow his net worth and his savings year over year, and potentially save up for either a big medical expense or just have a way to retire, withdraw the money with really low cost, low taxes. He says this app will make tracking my expenses and growing my savings much easier. Very enthusiastic. Thank you, Dad. And then his buddy, Mark Finkhauser, who he was talking to about this app. Or this app is a CPA and a practicing accountant. So he's got lots of clients um, that he helps out through tax season. And for him to save a lot of time just using MedEx, he wants everyone um, that he serves to use MedEx to make his life easier and to make their life easier as well. So there's a lot of excitement around the market right now. And finally, our pitch, we asked for $100,000. Um, this is mainly to support development costs, cloud storage costs, um, any kind of AWS storage, um, just for 8% of our company. Um, you can really play a part in, in revolutionizing the HSA and the uh, investment tracking uh, business if you invest with us today. So thank you. Um, we'll take your questions now. Tracking. It's mostly business accounting. Um, but they do have the features of taking pictures of your seat, looking at your seat, that paperless route you're going to. Yeah. It would be very easy for them to transition and do an option. They just say you just want to get some Yeah, for yeah, sure. That's a great insight. Thank you. What does your timeline look like on like having a actual product ready to go and then, and then from there partnering with Fidelity? So MVP probably January uh, at the earliest, I would say, maybe a month or two after that. Partnering with Fidelity, um, we'll build the app around Fidelity. Um, that'll be our main testing channel partner. So yeah, you're that. gonna build this in three months? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a capstone project for us. So we've got awesome. MVPs due in January. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yeah, certainly. So actually having multiple different accounts and passwords makes it less secure because the chances of Apple and Google are getting hacked is next to zero, but having our servers hacked would be a different story. Um, so in the end, it, it actually makes it more secure the less accounts that you have, maybe ironically as that, as that may seem. And then additionally, um, Plaid has a lot of different security measures and just making um, all the authentication for banks and financial information go through and you know, already like an established fintech partner uh, will, will make things really easy and secure for us as well. So we're really just offshoring a lot of the security for our application. And storage receipts as well, obviously that's sensitive HIPAA information, um, AWS encrypts and then any kind of images or data that we store. And we're using AWS for a cloud storage. Yeah. So you're using Plaid for the cost of that account, right? Uh, Plaid can track account balances and stuff. We're not responsible for direct deposits right now. So they don't get caught then? Uh, Plaid would not take, I mean, they charge a, a service fee for using their API. It um, would be an expense to us, but. I'm just confused. Is that, is that just like to verify your bank details, or what is, what is Plaid doing this day? So it would allow you to track every single transaction that comes through the bank account you hook up through Plaid. Okay. 
I think that functionality exists, but we won't worry about that. Yeah. Uh, maybe I missed this during this pitch, but is it a manual entry software, or is that you can just take a picture and everything will be scanned? A little bit of both. Um, most of it will be automated. You take the picture, it'll scan what it can off the receipt. So date, amount, maybe the address of the doctor's office you went to, or whatever Walmart uh, you went to. And then you can manually enter some more details if you want. Since it is like a scanning of a picture, is it really a way to take inputs from different bills? Because I know that bills are not going all to all look the same. So is it not, to give, not going to give any errors if the picture, like if, it's cannot, if you cannot read the information on the bill? Like, have you considered this or if so what? Yeah, definitely. So most receipts have a uh, transaction date. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've got a couple IDs that they run in there, mm -hmm. a product, mm -hmm. and then a product amount, and then a net amount after tax, right? So while a lot of receipt structures differ, um, the overall, you can kind of call it like a JSON object if you're familiar with code. But the overall JSON object is the same, and OCR is optimized to you know, pick the, the details from the receipts. And we've got algorithms that will parse it correctly. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Thank you guys for your time.